Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and originally when I planned to do a whole month of face-ups and blushing, I set out to do it all in January, and we immediately had three weeks of rain followed by the most wintry weather we've had in my area since I moved here ten years ago. It was kind of stressful, really, because I had planned to do a ton of doll painting in the span of a week. I knew February would be pretty hectic, preparing stuff for another book release, and trying to knock out a big chunk of writing for an upcoming project that's overdue. So my goal was to have the table clear with everything filmed ahead of time. Instead, the past few weeks have been a little nuts, trying to do all the book stuff and all the filming stuff at the same time. Because of the weather, I made the decision to switch to using airbrushed sealants most of the time. I shared a bit about the sealant that I've liked best last week, but I decided to try to make things easier on myself by getting an ultrasonic cleaner for my airbrush. One of my friends swears by hers, and most of what I read indicated that a little one was all that's really necessary for keeping an airbrush clean with minimal effort. I knew I'd have to do a lot of airbrushing for this project since I did some touch-up puttying on the heads I cast for Rune after they were dyed, because a few bubbles were revealed. So I mixed some Tamiya acrylics to match the color I dyed the doll, and figured I would start with two heads, the sleeping head and just one of the open-eyed heads. I think he'll end up having at least four heads because I want to paint some of the open-eyed ones with different expressions. The first one will be neutral, the second will probably be an angry expression, and I don't know what I want to do with the third one yet. I still need to finish sanding the touch-ups on the other two open-eyed heads that I have, and starting with these two is more than enough to get the doll back together. After I color matched and sealed the heads with my Vallejo matte varnish, I thought I would go ahead and give the ultrasonic cleaner a try. Most of what I read in all the rave reviews indicated that for removing fresh acrylic paint, warm water and dish soap was all that would be necessary. So I disassembled most of the airbrush and popped it in to give it a trial run. I kept the needle out because it's the most delicate part of the whole airbrush and all the ice and snow meant that I can't just run out and get a replacement if it gets bent or damaged. Fortunately, it's also the easiest part to clean by hand. And that's all I'm going to say for the ultrasonic cleaner for right now though, because after giving it a try, I've got a lot of thoughts and I also want to experiment with a few other things, so I'll probably hold off and make a video specifically about it and whether or not I think it'll end up being useful for a BJD hobbyist. So then it was time to tackle the face-up that I'd been putting off longest this month. I always try to prioritize commission work because I'm not super bothered by waiting to work on my own dolls especially when they've been sitting around disassembled for a year like Rune has. But the longer I waited to work on him, the less sure I felt about doing it. I mean, I'm excited to see him all together. It's been quite an ordeal, getting his head to the point where I can actually sit down and paint one. But once I actually could, I discovered that I wasn't feeling very confident about being able to execute the vision I have. I'm always trying new things and exploring new methods of doing stuff, but as I prepared the heads to be painted, I realized that in the past year I haven't been able to give myself the opportunity to just sit down and play with ideas or techniques in ways that help me learn. So while I knew that I wanted to give him a face-up that was in a new kind of style, a little bit different from what I've done before, I didn't even know how to start and knowing there were people who've been following the doll's progress since I started my channel several years ago who would want to see how things came together in the end was a little bit intimidating. I often feel like there's a lot of pressure on artists to make visible progress in their work, to constantly be developing, but also putting together really polished end results on a regular basis to have things to share. Prior to 2020, I never felt that was a big deal for me because I had the time to practice everything I wanted to do before I made a video about actually doing it. So when I would make a sewing tutorial to go with one of my new patterns, it could be the fourth or fifth time I'd made something from that particular pattern. Or when I'm doing wigs, the new parting method might be something that I already got good results with off camera, so I have the confidence to share it and know it'll turn out well. But I have so little time now, and I hate feeling like I'm stuck in a situation where I have three targets to aim at. 
I can practice new techniques or methods or do research so that I have something new and somewhat competent to share. Or I can produce something that'll look good and actually be helpful to people. Or I can get something done for a project video in time to be able to share anything at all. Those are all good targets, but life's only giving me two arrows right now, so even if I manage to hit a bullseye on two of them, my quiver's empty when I get to the third. So it often feels like stagnating and not having anything new or valuable to contribute. I think that's part of why I hesitate to share things like this where I don't make a ton of progress because I feel like everything I put out in the world should be useful. Ultimately, I decided that while I would record part of the face-up process here, I wouldn't film the whole thing. It would be enough to show a general idea of what I want to try and what I'm going to be working on, such as more natural looking lashes and more diverse color selections in blushing. And I mean, blushing resin in colors other than a neutral peach is always a unique challenge anyway. It's kind of like white resin in that respect. When blushing an NS resin doll, I know I can use peach and pink and not have to worry about anything else because there are already those peachy and yellow base tones in the resin. But when you're working with tan, you have to be more mindful of colors turning muddy or murky because you've got a much deeper base and more varying undertones to work with. So the peaches and pinks don't really show up well. It's a matter of using more purples and mauves, terracotta colors and browns, but you also have to be mindful that it goes on light so that it doesn't look dirty, because you can't do quite as much in one layer as you can on NS resin. Tan is less forgiving, but honestly I think white resin is the worst for that, because when you work with white you're starting with nothing at all, so that means you've got to include your own undertones with multiple layers. So for that, you end up needing blues and purples in addition to your pinks. Because if you're trying to do just purples or pinks alone, they end up looking either bruised, dead, or kind of rashy. So at least with tan, I only have to worry about muddy colors or stuff not showing up. But having the camera on makes me feel a little bit self-conscious when I'm working on new things. And I think I'm more likely to play it safe when I have the camera on. Even though I know logically that people won't care if I mess things up halfway through and have to start over, it's still tough to gather the courage to try stuff that I'd never considered before, knowing that it's probably going to fail. The good news about working on Rune is that, since I'll have four heads, I can experiment on one and then have three others that I can film from beginning to end, and hopefully along the way I'll pick up some new techniques and ideas for colors that I can share when I get to doing those videos. For now, I'm just going to stop after this first layer of blushing here. Not just because it'll be easier to be braver when nobody's watching and waiting for me to ruin it, but also because I need to get my airbrush put back together to put a layer of sealant on, and that wasn't something that was going to happen the night I sat down to paint this doll. So for now, I guess you get a bit of a cliffhanger, and hopefully sometime soon I'll be ready to share how this big guy turned out. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.